James and the Bootlace. Next morning, the fat controller spoke severely to James. If you can't behave, I shall take away your red coat of paint and paint you blue. James did not like that at all. And he was very rough with the coaches as he brought them to the platform. Come along, come along, he called rudely. All in good time, all in good time, said the coaches. Come on, don't talk, come on, don't talk, answered James. And with the coaches squealing and grumbling after him, he snorted into the station. James was cross that morning. The fat controller had spoken to him severely. The coaches had dawdled, and worst of all, he had to fetch his own coaches. Gordon never does, thought James, and he is only painted blue. A splendid engine like me should never have to fetch his own coaches. As he puffed and snorted, waiting for the guard to blow his whistle. To make things even worse for James, he then had to take the coaches to a different platform where no one came near him. The fat controller was in his office, the station master was at the other end of the train, and the guard and even the little boys stood a long way off. James felt lonely. I'll show them, he said to himself. They think Gordon is the only engine who can pull coaches. As soon as the guard blew his whistle, he started off with a tremendous jerk. Come on, come on, come on, he puffed, and the coaches squeaked and protested behind him, clattering along the points. Hurry, 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 puffed James. You're going too fast, you're going too fast, swayed the coaches. Indeed, we're going so fast that they were swaying from side to side. James laughed and tried to go faster, but the coaches wouldn't let him. We're going to stop, we're going to stop, we're going to stop they said, and James found himself going slower and slower. What's the matter? James asked his driver. The brakes are hard on. Leak in the pipe, most likely. You banged the coaches enough to make a leak in anything. The guard and the driver got out and looked at the brake pipes all along the train. At last they found a hole where rough treatment had made a joint work loose. How shall we mend it? James's driver thought for a moment. We'll do it with a leather boot lace and some newspapers. Well, where are we going to get a boot lace from? Asked the guard. We haven't one. Ask the passengers, said the driver. So the guard made everyone get out. Has anyone got a leather boot lace? He asked. They all said no, except for one man, whose name was Jeremiah Jobling, who was trying to hide his feet. You have a leather boot lace there, I see, sir, said the guard. Please give it to me. I won't, said Jeremiah Jobling. Then, said the guard sternly, I'm afraid this train will have to stop where it is then. Then the passengers told the guard what a bad railway it was. But the guard climbed into his van, and the driver just let off steam in James. So they told Jeremiah Dublin he was a very bad man instead. At last, he gave his lace to the driver and tied a pad of newspaper tightly around the hole. And James was able to pull the train. But he was sadder and a wiser, James, and took care never to bump the coaches again.